Uh, today I'm going to run through a quick tutorial using HECRS. HECRS stands for Hydraulic Engineering Center River Analysis System. A basic model in HECRS uses the energy equation to compute a water surface elevation based on a given discharge and resi resistance. The first thing we want to do in HECRS is create a project file. To do this, go to File, New Project, and give the file a name in the title box. I'm going to call this Tutorial. As you type in the title box, you'll notice text also appears in the file name box. If there's not a file name given before the .prj extension, it won't let you save. And when this occurs, you can just delete the text out of the title box and retype it in and, be sh and ensure that text shows up in the file name box. Then in the right hand window, you can select where to save your file and click OK. Next, we want to check the units that HECRAS is using to model this system. To do this, go to Options, Unit System, and here you can change between System International and U.S. Customary. I'm going to leave the units in U.S. Customary for this tutorial. We will essentially work from left to right across the top ribbon of the main window as we use tools to set up our model. If you hover over each tool, it will tell you what that specific tool does when he the HECRAS window is selected. I'll try to touch on each of these tools as we use them throughout the process of building the model. I'll begin by using the Geometric Data tool. When this tool is selected, the Geometric Data window will appear. In this window, we select the River Reach Data tool to insert our first river reach. When, it, when drawing in a river reach, it is important to draw it in from upstream to downstream due to the labeling system HECRAS uses. This also will be sure that we are in the correct orientation later when entering cross-sectional data. So left click to begin the reach and when you get to the bottom of the or the end of the reach, double click to place the line. Then you'll be prompted to name the river as well as the reach. Select OK to name the reach and here you can see there's an arrow indicating the direction of assumed flow and your reach 1 has been labeled on top of the river name tutorial. So the next thing we'll do is enter some cross-sectional data that's going to define the channel geometry. First we need to pull up the cross-section tool on the left hand side of the screen here. <clears throat> An important note uh, when entering cross-section data is that HECRAS establishes the downstream end as 0 and works its way upstream as far as the station, river station, that will be appear in this box is concerned. And uh, as you enter the station data coordinates, remember that the data needs to be entered from left to right as if you're looking downstream. So to begin entering a cross section, go to Options, Add a New Cross Section. And here we'll enter the river station um, as it appears in the Reach 1 that we just created. So to start, I'll put in River Station 0. Now you can add a description here. I'll call this the Downstream. And in the Cross-Section Coordinate window, we'll add cross-section data in the form of XY data, beginning with the station, then the elevation. In order to run the model, we need to input some Manning N values. These will be entered to describe the channel characteristics. As you can see, there's three boxes that can be filled in, LOB, Channel, and ROB. LOB and ROB just stand for left of bank station, and this will describe the floodplain areas, whereas Channel will describe the actual channel that the water water's flowing through. And we'll also need to enter some bank station data to get the model to run. If there isn't a floodplain in your particular model, you just simply start the bank station at the point of the edge of the cross section. So now let's build the cross section. We'll start off by just starting at station zero. And I'll do an elevation of three feet high. I'm also going to put a point at zero, zero. I'm going to make a rectangular channel. And we'll say that this channel is five feet wide and three feet on the other or three feet tall on the other side.
say the Manning end value for this is 0 0.015. And we'll call the left and right bank stations 0 and 5. If you ever have a question while you're entering, inputting this data, if you click on the question mark next to the uh, title, it'll give you a quick hint on what should be entered into those uh, boxes. As you can see, the help is coming up here. And so for the contraction expansion factor. Here's the factors for the different contractions and expansions or transitions. For this particular setup, I'm going to leave, set these equal to zero. And once you've entered this data, click apply data to actually build the cross section. So looking in the preview window, it appears I have a point out of order, so I'll get that corrected now. Feet five, elevation zero, three. Click apply data again, and now we have our rectangular cross section. For simplicity in this example, I'll assume I'm dealing with a perfectly uniform channel, uh, the full length of the channel. Now, because of this, I can use the cross section interpolation tool. If the cross sections weren't uniform all the way up the channel, you would just continue to go to options and add a new cross section and then put the channel geometry for the next cross section upstream. In this case, we'll first need to copy the current cross section. In this window, it, you'll be given the river in the reach that you're currently working in, as well as a box to enter the river station. This river station corresponds to the upstream river station that you'll be copying this cross section to. So I'll copy this cross section 40 feet upstream. And that came up from my previous uh, attempt at setting up the model, but we now have a cross section 40, located 40 feet upstream from station zero. You can cycle through the river stations that you currently have set up using these arrows next to the river station box. Once we cycle through, we can see all the attributes have been copied over from river station zero to river station 40. Now, our description's also been copied over, but we're going to want to change that because this is now the upstream end of the river. Apply this data to save. I also need to input the downstream reach links. In this case, the LOB channel and ROB are all going to be equal to 40 since the cross section is perpendicular to the channel we've created. If the cross section wasn't perpendicular, you can skew the cross section by changing these values. Again, we need to apply this data. And now we're ready to use the interpolation tool. To get to this, we can close this box, go to Tools, Cross Section Interpolation. We're going to do this between two points, our upstream and downstream cross sections. In this box, we're going to need to define the distance between uh, each cross section. So for this, I will say, let's do five feet and once you've entered that you can interpolate the new cross sections you can close this window now our new cross sections appear inside of the geometric data window now let's just run through and check and make sure everything is uh, copied over successfully so we can go to this edit cross section we will bring up this familiar table and you can cycle through each station that we've created. As you can see, the red circle on the left screen in the geometric data window indicates which cross section you're looking at. And it appears that everything looks uniform as expected. So we can close this now and we're ready to begin entering flow data. Back to this opening HECRAS window. Uh, we're still moving left to right. Uh, we, we just finished with the geometric data. And here we can enter uh, steady flow data as well as unsteady flow data or quasi unsteady flow data.
<clears throat> For this example, I'm going to just enter steady flow data. So click this tool and you'll see the steady flow data box. So we want to enter the number of profiles in question. I'm going to go ahead and just run for two profiles right now. So number two there. As you can see, a new profile comes up in the lower part of the screen. Uh, my first profile is going to be 5 cubic feet per second. And my second one will be 15 cubic feet per second. Uh, if you notice down at the bottom of this window, uh, it gives the units that uh, are being entered for these profiles. Also, I'll just quickly point out, if you're modeling uh, for a storm event um, or something like that, you can also edit the profile names um, where you can change the PF1, PF2. Uh, for this example, though, I'm going to leave those uh, how they are now. Next, we're going to need to define the reach boundary conditions. So we'll go to this reach boundary conditions button. We'll pull up this window, and I'm going to assume <clears throat> that we have uh, sub critical flow, and downstream we have a critical depth as water flows over the outfall. And these will be my boundary conditions. Click OK on that. We'll apply this data, and we can exit out of the steady flow data table. Now ready to move on to the run steady flow analysis. So we'll move to the run perform steady flow simulation button. Open this up and I'm assuming the flow regime is subcritical for this channel. And we'll click compute. And this is saying that the, it's completed the process. So you can close this window. And you'll notice now that you uh, have files. Uh, in all of these boxes on the uh, main HECRES window. And it's important to note that uh, all of these plans are saved in my C drive. All of the files uh, need to be saved on the same drive uh, for HECRES to go look for them in order to run the simulation. So now that the simulation has been run, let's first look at the profile. So opening the profile window, I'll maximize this so you can see a little better. Um, you can see on the right side we have a legend that gives us our energy grade line, water surface, uh, critical elevation, uh, or critical depth. Uh, and you can change what profiles are turned on here uh, so that it's not as cluttered when you're trying to view them. You can also look at some of the variables that we can turn on and off for this to display. So here, if we wanted to, say, take off the energy grade elevation and we were just concerned with the critical depth uh, and the water surface, we could turn everything off. We'll leave the reach labels on. Uh, and this will give us uh, easy, easy to look at and easy to pull numbers off of the profile of the section we just modeled. So let's go back now and take a look at uh, some of the cross sections. So a quick, uh, quick way to get to the cross section is this button here. I'll pull this up. I'm going to turn some of the variables that are displayed back on. And here we're looking at the cross section at River Station Zero. So this would be useful if uh, the channel that you were modeling had a bunch of different cross sections and you could quickly run through and see what cross sections gave you what results as you uh, use these errors to navigate the river stations. The last thing I'll touch on is the tables tab. The tables tab can be found in the main HECRES window <clears throat> uh, underneath this view output summary. Inside the uh, Tables tab, you can uh, first go to the Options and choose the profiles that you want to include in the uh, output file. So here we're only display currently displaying Profile 2, 
for each one at all the river stations. And I'm going to add profile one to this as well. You may want to adjust the level of precision shown in the table depending on the size of the channel you create. You can do this in options, standard table number of decimal places. And as you can see now, they're all, all of these variables are set to be read at two decimal places, as you can see in the table. I'm going to leave that for now. And lastly, we can define what uh, headings are available in the output table. Go to define table under options. And here we have the columns and rows that are currently visible uh, in the output table window. If you want to add uh, a, a different variable to this table, you just simply pick a variable from the list. Uh, so if I wanted to pick the area of the channel and choose col a column and double click the variable you want to enter. So now we have the area in square feet and that'll be added to the table. So once all the variables that you want in your output file are listed in the table, uh, you can go up to File and you can copy this uh, data to the clipboard with the headings or just the data and this can easily be pasted into a program like Excel uh, for further manipulation. So that will conclude the tutorial. I hope now you have all the tools that you'll need to set up and perform an analysis on a HECRAS model.